In this video, we are going to be going for the Resident Evil 4 Remake Platinum. Okay. It's game time. So Resident Evil is a series that holds a special place in my, and I imagine many people's hearts. I have played this series for near two decades. As I remember to the day playing the first Resident Evil game at like six years old, Resident Evil 2, and being so confused as to why Leon was just spinning in place because I didn't understand what tank controls were. Resident Evil has had some awful games. <laughs> but it has also had some of the best games on certain console generations. Yes. Yes. Yeah! When Capcom strike gold with Resident Evil, they don't just strike gold, they strike diamonds. With Resident Evil 4, in my opinion, being probably their brightest diamond. While this game led the series down to some horrifying games, and not in the good way, there is no denying that Resident Evil 4 is basically Capcom's magnum opus. With now thankfully, after Capcom releasing mediocre title after mediocre title, in 2016, when Resident Evil 7 got announced, we were thankfully back on track with the franchise, with Capcom releasing BANGER! AFTER BANGER! AFTER BANGER! They have had one miss with Resident Evil 3, but we, we move on. Resident Evil 4 is considered one of the greatest video games that has ever been made. In a year where games like Shadow of the Colossus and God of War were released, it was Resident Evil 4 that was the talk of the town winning many Game of the Year awards. I personally have lost track at how many times I've completed this game fully, and since 2005, it has been released on damn near every single system possible. It was even released on the iPod. And yes, I beat the game on that too. You know how people mock Skyrim for being on everything? Resident Evil 4 has been on 13 different systems. It was released on a Zebo. What on earth is a Zebo? And why is the enemy skin blue? Is that blue? Is that, is that blue? blue? Is this, this is fucking blue. Resident Evil 4 pretty much perfected the over-the-shoulder third-person action before anyone else, and we see so many games use this today. Whether it's Dead Space, God of War, The Last of Us, with The Last of Us game designer Ricky Cambia saying himself that games like Ico and Resident Evil 4 were influences in their game design. But now, 18 years later, after the original was released on the GameCube, the Resident Evil 4 remake has been released. Before we talk about the Platinum, I just want to say, this game isn't perfect, like no video game is. I came into this game knowing that this game was pretty much gonna be my game of the year. Resident Evil 4 is my all-time favorite game. I 100% of the achievements on the 360 and also 100% of it twice on the PS3 and PS4. On top of beating the game on every single system besides the Zebo. So unless they absolutely royally screwed this game up, like Resident Evil 3 cutting up big chunks of the game, I knew this game would pretty much be my game of the year and I'm so thankful to say I was correct. I love pretty much everything about this game. I love you guys so much. There are some slight nitpicks with the gameplay. What the hell was that? The grenade rolled across the banister and the characters, but as a package, the game is practically flawless. Talk too much. Failed. And I'm saying this after I've done seven damn playthroughs to get to the Platinum. So let's talk about the Platinum, shall we? So yes, seven playthroughs. The first playthrough was just my standard playthrough, enjoying the game and basically loving every single second of it. While doing this playthrough, I was picking up collectibles as well as doing some miscellaneous trophies. Now, on to the endless amount of playthroughs. Playthrough two, we are beating the game on New Game Plus, only using a pistol and a knife and not speaking to the merchant. Playthrough three, we are beating the game on New Game Plus professional difficulty with the infinite rocket launcher. Now I have seen some people throw in the no healing playthrough with this as well, but professional difficulty with one health bar, that just ain't it chief. See, I have a plan. Playthrough 4, we're doing hardcore S plus difficulty, easily the hardest part of my run to get S plus on hardcore, you have to play on a fresh save, being in the game in under five and a half hours. Thankfully you can use the infinite Chicago typewriter when you get to chapter seven, but getting to chapter seven, whoo, that's, that's a task. Completing this playthrough unlocks the chicken hat, which is probably the best equipment in the game just cause it lets you take more damage, which will be helpful for our next playthrough new game on professional. Now on this playthrough, you aren't allowed to use infinite weapons. This is a regular new game weapons. It's a tough one. Next two playthroughs are thankfully the breeze, beating the game without healing on the sister difficulty with the infinite launcher and the infinite hand cannon. Then finally, beating the game on standard difficulty with an S plus ranking. So lots to do. I'm very excited to get into it. Sit back, relax, grab yourselves a first aid spray, and let's get into one of the greatest games to ever exist. 
remade. You stay here with Leon. He is better with the ladies. I'm sure. All right, so let's uh, begin this, uh, shall we? Let's go! <laughs> Ready to play! And already the nostalgia is just hitting me. I'm sure your boys didn't come all the way out here to roast marshmallows. <laughs> oh, you said it! I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. We encounter our first enemy and it's just as memorable as the original. My god. <laughs> I know I've already played this, but I don't care. <laughs> now, one thing I'm happy that this game did keep is Leon's one-liners. Jump out the window, Leon! Pull myself out. <laughs> <laughs> I say this just because after this game was released in 2005, they made Leon so miserable. The Leon in Resident Evil 6 is just not the same character. The only thing they have in common is his hair is the same. Also, another fantastic change. They kept the same save theme, but they just remixed it and somehow made it even better. They remixed the freaking... Oh. By the way, if you get bored of me comparing this to the original, it's my favorite game ever. Allow me to fall in love with things. I will say one thing that Capcom needed was another boss fight. The U3 boss fight was for some reason cut from the main game, and I'm not really sure why. I'm reading online, people have a theory that this boss is going to be in Ada's storyline as DLC, but if that isn't the case, why was it cut without anything to make up for it? For example, a boss fight with a bear to explain why I keep standing in so many goddamn bear traps. Oh, well, nice another bear trap still in the game. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying the video, smash that like button. It helps me out an absolute ton. Now, we arrive at the village. One of my favorite encounters from the original, and they have done it beautifully here. Oh, we're in the village. Let's go. This encounter just beautifully shows off the combat in this game. Albeit on harder difficulties, it can show off the absolute worst of the combat. But for now, like, just look at these kicks. Oh, bro, come on. It was all going well until this happened. Oh, why did that fall? What is happening? Bro, what the hell is... Get out of the way. <laughs> bro, what? <laughs> yeah, even now, I don't know how that happened. But let's try this again. One thing that I absolutely adore that got added is the stealth takedown. Okay, let's know that it is actually stealth in this. And going back to the bear traps, I love how random the enemies are. I love that they can flank you and not just chase you from one direction. And look at this geezer just setting up a bear trap. Oh, bro, they set bear traps? And finally, after a few minutes, the bell tolls for bingo. Oh, they're all going bingo. Where's everyone going? Bingo? He said it! <laughs> after everyone leaves to play bingo, we do some looting around the village. Like after... What the hell are you doing in there? After looting the village, we find our first merchant request. There are about 19 of these to do in the game, and they all reward you with spinels. You don't just pick up and sell spinels in this game. But these spinels you can use to purchase special items from the merchant, which we will touch on a bit later. Here it is! For the love of God, will somebody please get rid of the blue medallions? The reward is three spinels. Where's my Punisher? <laughs> we then pick up the wooden cog in order to advance to the next area, but not before we are rudely interrupted. God damn. Well, what are you? Now we have uh, one of our new collectibles to pick up. Remember in Resident Evil 2 where you had to shoot the Mr. Raccoon statues? Well, they're back, but they changed the statue and I forever love what they've done with this. <laughs> it's freaking Salazar. <laughs> Oh, I love that. We then meet up with Luis and everyone's favorite block of cheddar. Oh, the big cheese. Yup. Oh. Moving on to chapter two. At the start of chapter two, we have nothing in our inventory and we have to learn stealth and learn the parry mechanic, which, oh my God, is such a good addition to this game. Hey. We then run into everyone's favorite gaming merchant. Over here, stranger. Okay. Who needs the Duke when you have this merchant? Welcome. Welcome. 
<laughs> the merchant works basically the same as the original, only now he can give you side quests, which, as I said before, gives you spinels to purchase unique guns, treasure maps, and more. One thing I love that they added with this game is you can now combine treasures to make them much more valuable. You could kind of do this in the original a little bit, with like the beer steins and the elegant masks, but you can combine them so much more in this game. The merchant gives us another quest to kill the three rats, which we easily do, and that gets us three extra spinels. There we go. We then pick up a trophy for doing our first upgrade. Hey. We then press on and find the insignia key, which is crucial to get into the church where Ashley is being kept. Hi, how are you? Oh, bro, he looks. <laughs> Moving on to chapter three, we thankfully get to rescue this dog who will help us in a future boss fight. Oh, no, you're a dog. Oh. I better see you for a boss fight later. We then return to the village and it's strangely very quiet. We then end up buying the TMP. The TMP is forever one of my favorite guns to use in Resident Evil 4. It's just really good at getting easy headshots to then get some easy kicks. Then we complete one of the more difficult merchant requests we get given. Imagine this, these. All right, that was difficult. We then pick up our fifth trophy in the game. Oh, chat, you already know what we're doing. You, you, you already know what we're doing. <laughs> it's a trophy. <laughs> we then progress into the first of four shooting ranges. These were in the original. However, they were a lot easier in the original. And when doing the target practice, you get these tokens, and then you can use those tokens to get case attachments. Some of them are actually really useful, like getting an extra percentage of ammo when crafting, or this lovely nod to the Ditman glitch from the original game, where the striker makes you run 8% faster. Oh, you look charming. Oh, oh. But in the game, we do have to get an S rank on all the target ranges. But after concluding the first target range, we press on to the Lago. But the boat we need is out of fuel, because of course it is. We quickly grab the fuel and then proceed to the next boss, the Del Lago. My gold. Now, probably an unpopular opinion for this, but I prefer the OG Delago to the remake one. The Delago in this game is just easy. Like, he's just really not that hard. For one, you don't have tank controls in the boat in the remake, so you can aim while steering, which... I don't want to champion the realistic trope in a Resident Evil game, but still. In the original, if you wanted to move the boat, you had to stop aiming. And also, you could get knocked out of the boat, which is not something that can happen in the remake since they took out the QTEs. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy the QTEs are gone, but this was my most anticipated boss fight, and sadly, it just fell flat for me. After defeating the Delago, we move on to Chapter 4, and we see our first sighting of Las Plagas. There it is. Oh, it looks so good. Do flash grenades still kill him? They do. Now, in order to get the church open, we need to find these two heads to unlock this insignia. But before that, we pick up a new weapon, the Red Nine. For some reason, the most powerful handgun in the game is just chilling on this wrecked boat. I'm not complaining, but it's just weird. We then move on to Chicken Island, because it's an island full of chickens. And we find the golden chicken egg to sell to the merchant for a side quest. I don't know what he wants to do with golden chicken eggs, but I don't really question his taste. We then have to harpoon this fish for another side quest. After picking up both the heads and inserting them, we grab the church insignia. But while making our way back to the church, we have to deal with probably one of my favorite bosses in all of Resident Evil. There's nothing special about him. It's just, it's just iconic at this stage. Are oh, we fighting Delago? Not the Lago. El Gigante. Yes, we are. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. gasps> nice. It's that dog. It's that dog. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Gigante dead. Gigante is dead. But after we defeat the El Gigante, we finally get back to the church. We do this light puzzle, which after doing this puzzle seven times, I still couldn't tell you how to properly do it. We find this lovely little memento that makes me feel so old. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, whoa. I had a phone just like that. And then we grab Ashley and begin chapter five. All right. Ashley should be in Ashley. here. Ashley Graham, are you in here? No! <laughs> 
president's orders it. <laughs> His face. All right, so the start of chapter five, I let Ashley get grabbed so I could quickly knock out a trophy. There we go. That's what I needed. There we go. All right. We have to make our way through the village once again and run into Luis. Now, the cabin, I do enjoy. On hardcore, it's awful. But on this difficulty, it's just a lot of fun. Hell did you come from? And then we begin chapter six with Luis and the wonderful Ada. Now, this is where my first dislike of the game comes in. I do not like Ada's voice actor performance. Not enough to harass the poor person, which, by the way, if you're one of those posting abuse harassing Lily Go, just because you dislike her performance, just come on, really? A little rough, don't you think? Believe it or not, guys, you can dislike something and not hurl abuse at people. But on to chapter six. It's time to leave the village, but not before some quick boss fights. All right, Leon, that was a bit unnecessary. <laughs> oh, the Bella, the Bella sisters? Yeah, is that what they're called? After defeating the Bella sisters, we try and escape, but sadly the big block of Philadelphia thwarts our plans. But then we have a big old boss fight against the big old Parmesan. <laughs> but then we have a good old boss fight against the big Parmesan. You blew it! But then we have a good old boss fight against Parmesan. Why can't I say that word? Then we have ourselves a big boss fight against the big Parmesan. I really like this boss fight in the original, and I really like it in the remake. Hey, grilled big cheese. Then after we defeat the then after we defeat the big mozzarella, we move on to chapter seven, which is of course the castle. On arriving at the castle, we hit the merchant and see a goddamn wonderful sight. And the broken butterfly. <laughs> oh my freaking god, get me a scope immediately. <laughs> there we go, that's better. It's a three times zoom? When the hell am I going to use a three times zoom in this game? Remember what I said when they use a three times zoom? Progressing through the castle, we come to the Ganados launching catapults at us and needing to navigate the fireballs of death being hurled towards us. After we take control of our own catapult, we can actually take control of it, which is kind of cool. We defeat an enemy with it before eventually destroying the door to progress. Of course, when we walk through this door, we meet our new villain, which is, of course, the wonderful Salazar. Oh, we didn't get to hear this stupid laugh. Oh, well. Who the hell are you? <laughs> and while I do love his new design, he looks so much more horrifying. I just prefer him in the original. I just like the banter that the villains have with Leon, which is not really seen much here. Right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Hmm. Say whatever you please. Die, you worm! Now, we finally get to the Garador. And oh my freaking god, I love the design on the Garador. Oh, that's hot. Oh, there he is. Now, there's a trophy to kill him with just a knife, which we're going to knock out here. There we go. Never heard it coming. After the Garador is taken out, we move to one of the most difficult rooms in the game. It was difficult in the original. It's just annoying in the remake. We're, of course, talking about the water room. No. This room can just be so bad. There's so many enemies. A lot of them have Plagas that can one-shot you. There's crossbow enemies. Overall, just not a great time. <sighs> After we conclude the water room, Ashley starts showing symptoms of the plaga that is inside her. And I just gotta say, I adore this scene so much. You okay? I think so. Uh... Instead of worrying about her, worry about your own skin. Foolish little life. Uh, temperance, child. Oh, that's... Oh, my God, that's awesome. But now, starting chapter eight, we meet up with the... Well, if it isn't the bitch in the red dress. And after the Aether encounter, we see a new type of Plaga. This Plaga can take over an enemy and make them just so much stronger. Not what I thought it was. Ow. Ow. 
dick. After scaling this tower, we encounter another Edel Gigante, and this one just throws rocks at you, being very annoying. After dealing with him with, of course, a cannon, because why not? We reach the big hedge maze. Oh, it's the hedge maze. <gasps> oh, I rate that. But before we start said maze, we meet up with Ashley again. And it seems like this that made me just love Ashley in the remake. She isn't like the original where she's really not much of a character in the original. But in this game, she has conflict within herself. She's an actual real person. And I just love that. Now we begin chapter nine and tackle the hedge maze. The hedge maze is altered slightly but overall i just prefer it number one the map actually works but in the maze there are three levers that you need to pull to open the next area after we tackle the maze we hit our next set of shooting ranges and after we open our next set of statues we we get a very helpful one which is gonna help us a lot in the long run that was like something you'd see at the fair it reminds me of being a kid all right fair enough 20% off a rocket. It's the old skin. Now onto the next area, we need three different heads. This is similar to when you needed the king and queen's cup in the original. You have three different paths, but ultimately you do need to beat them all. The first path we hit, we needed to defeat a few knights. The next room we get ambushed and I see a death scene that I haven't actually seen yet. And the third head requires us to sit down and ring a bell. After we insert the heads, Leon ends up trapped and we proceed to Ashley's portion of the game. Now, Ashley's section can be a bit annoying, mainly down to the knights having the ability to one-shot you. But overall, I do rather enjoy it. We pick up this insignia and then free Leon, but sadly, Ashley gets captured again. Now, chapter 10 could be a bit of a chaotic one. A few boss fights and this absolute nightmare of a room. This is the Novisador room. In this room, you have to flick two different switches, but... God damn, these Navisadors make this the worst, one of the worst rooms in the game. On this playthrough, I didn't even think they were bad. But oh my god, on upcoming playthroughs on Hardcore and Professional, I remember why I hated these things. But after we flip both switches, we advance into the double Garador room. Now, I actually really like this room. The fact that in this game, the Garadors can actually kill other enemies makes this room just fun on lower difficulties. On higher ones, it is an absolute nightmare. After the double Garadors fight, we finally find Ashley, but yeah, she's having a bit of trouble. We then get sent down to the mine area, which is where we have to fight Vertigo. But before that, let's get a quick trophy for selling a treasure for 100k. Let's get a trophy. There we go. Stute appraiser. And also we'll get another trophy for getting an exclusive weapon upgrade. And for the Vertigo fight, I'm just going to do what I always did in the original. Buy a rocket launcher and blow him up. Because the Vertigo boss fight without a rocket launcher. Ooh, it's summon. The rocket launcher is now bought. Let's fight the Vertigo. Oh, there he is. Oh, he looks amazing. Ow. Let's try. <laughs> you do kill him the same way. <laughs> Beautiful. After Vertigo is defeated, we get a lovely little teaser of what's to come. As you wish. It's Krauser. I can't wait for the fight with Krauser. <laughs> now, on to chapter 11. We are now with Luis, and we are going through the mining area. But first, of course, more shooting ranges. After the shooting ranges are done, we are doing the same as the original. We need some dynamite to blow up this rock to progress. Run! Oh my god, 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 oh my god. After blowing up said rock, we press on and I get hit with the biggest jump scare of this game. After you, I insist. Such a gentleman. Here's the thing. I was looking to see what the room was, and then I was like, oh, this is the Gigante room. Now onto the minecart ride. There are two of these, and we have to do both of them without taking damage. It's not as bad as it sounds. You do get a checkpoint before each cart ride, so it's really not that bad. Let's go. After completing the minecart, I just I just love this scene. Spoilers, I guess, if you haven't played Resident Evil 4, but the game's 18 years old, so is it really a spoiler? Almost what? <coughs> Louis! Long time no see, rookie. 
Major Krauser? Krauser! What the hell? We are just getting oh started. Oh my god, let's go. Give me what you got. Direct, Krauser! Oh my god, I love him. Now, after fighting Krauser, we move on to chapter 12. Now, chapter 12 is the Salazar boss fight chapter. But first, we have to do some collectible hunting and throw an egg at his portrait. <laughs> I have to throw it at Salazar's picture. <laughs> after that, we begin the clock tower. Now, there is a miscellaneous trophy here for doing the elevator ride without someone jumping on the elevator. I didn't bother with it since I knew I was going to come back here with an infinite rocket launcher. And I just thought it would have been just a little bit easier. After the elevator, we run across this wooden plat. Yeah, don't run across those. I wanted the Salazar boss fight. Now, for some reason, I decided to fight him normally. In the original, I just RPG'd him, but while editing, I found that I just fought him normally. I know on hardcore and professional difficulty, you're limited to how many rocket launchers you can buy. Maybe that's the case on standard, but yeah, let's take down Salazar. Get to him. Oh, wait, no. Nice. After we kill Salazar, we make our way to the island, the final area of the game. Chapter 13, the beginning of the island. The start of the island is quite similar, almost identical, to be honest. After entering the facility, we find Ashley unconscious. In order to free Ashley, we need a level 3 keycard. And if you've played the original, you know where we're going. But before that, we have to do these puzzles, which in my opinion, worst puzzle in the game. Just because I'm stupid and I don't understand them. But after that puzzle, we grab the level 1 keycard and... Yeah. Yeah, they regenerate. <laughs> they look even scarier. I remember 10-year-old me not being able to complete this game because of those damn things. They scared the absolute hell out of me. And their gimmick is that, well, if you can guess, they regenerate. The only way to kill them is to destroy the Plagas that is inside them. Now, in the remake, you can actually see the Plagas if you do enough damage to them, which is a little bit of a nice touch. But now let's get the level 2 keycard. We open this door, hoping to find a particular scope for a sniper, but end up getting something completely different. A brand new submachine gun. We do end up finding that beautiful scope that we need to effectively kill the regenerators. <gasps> That's it. We now got a quick trophy thanks to this scope. Oh dear. After acquiring the level 3 keycard, we are finally able to free Ashley. Now, on to chapter 14, we are back with Ashley, and now the objective is to get rid of the Plagas. But let's not deal with this time-sensitive, life-threatening risks, because we gotta do some more shooting ranges. Thankfully, these are the final ranges, so once we S plus these, we are basically done. Clutch it. Yes. After the shooting ranges are done, we run into another regenerator, or so we think. Oh, it's an Iron Maiden. God damn, son. After dealing with the Iron Maiden, we see one of my favorite scenes in the game. Now, all I'll say this, maybe an unpopular opinion, but basically, Sadler is better in the original. I miss the banter that he has with Leon. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to it? It should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, the... Uh. <laughs> On to chapter 15, we are not fighting you three. We are going straight to Krauser. Oh my god. Leon's first day. That's a cool little Easter egg, Krauser boss fight. Yep. Yes. After beating Krauser, we move on to the final section of the game. Good old Mike. And sadly, he meets the exact same end as the original. We do end up finding Ashley once again, but this time, not looking great. But now, let's finally remove the Plagas. On to the final chapter in the game, we get a trophy for getting every collectible on the island. I don't know how I didn't get this for the village or the castle. The only thing I can think of is I died and then didn't go get the same collectible since they don't carry over. All right, now let's start the Saddler boss fight. Use this. Oh, the special rocket launcher. 
making its appearance once again. After beating Sadler, the island is going to blow and we have to get the hell out of there. Hey, smooth escape. Let's go. I it says dispatch chopper. And we are finally done with the first playthrough. It only took six damn pages of a script. The next few playthroughs aren't going to be this long. We're just going to do some brief pointers. But before we start our next playthrough, we let's quickly get an unlockable. Uh, it's just got to be done, right? Pinstripe. It it's just, it's just got to be done. Now, our next playthrough is going to be pistol plus knife only without speaking to the merchant. This is on New Game Plus with assisted difficulty with a fully upgraded Blacktail and a fully upgraded Primal Knife, which gives us an infinite knife. So we don't have to speak to the merchant to repair the knife. Now, this just says everything about how easy this playthrough was. I beat the Vertigo pistol only. Hey, nice. And Salazar wasn't even that tough either. Like, it's, it's just an easy boss. Knife and a handgun. Oh, look at that. Get wrecked. A few people in my comments have asked me about the regenerators pistol only, and this is all I did. You shoot at them, and then when they fall to the floor, you hack at them with your knife. Now, just some brief pointers with pistol only slash knife only. Melee is okay. The turrets are okay. The cannons are okay. Don't use another gun or an egg or a grenade. Yeah, eggs count as well. Just don't use them. But overall, playthrough wasn't that bad. Next playthrough we're doing is New Game Plus on Professional with the Infinite Rocket Launcher. We are purchasing the launcher for 1.6 million. It usually costs 2 million, but because I got that Leon launcher attache case thing, it gave me 20% off, so I put it down to 1.6. I won't talk about this playthrough too much since, well, it's basically me using the infinite rocket launcher throughout the entire game, so it's pretty easy. One thing I did enjoy with this playthrough is the skips you can do with a launcher. And fun fact, you can do this exact skip in the original as well. And the double El Gigante fight is just funny. Now onto the ride the elevator with no one jumping on trophy. The launcher just makes this just easy, not any challenge whatsoever. But now let's just skip to the ending. We beat the game for the third time. Now for finishing this playthrough, we unlock Ashley's night armor, which is just amazing in cutscenes. But it also allows us not to worry about Ashley literally ever. And also we unlock the Chicago typewriter, which is going to be really helpful for our S plus playthroughs. Okay, we have four playthroughs left. Lads, we're getting there. Don't worry. We have standard and hardcore S plus. We have professional new game and we have beat the game without healing. Our next playthrough is going to be hardcore S plus. For me, the hardest part of this platinum, to be honest. Oh, why? <laughs> no way, man. To get an S plus on hardcore, you have to beat the game in under five and a half hours. Now, the plan is to do most of the merchant requests in the village. And then once we get to the castle, buy the upgrade ticket for 30 spinels. Apply it to the Chicago typewriter to get to the infinite Chicago typewriter. And yes, I know it's not called the Chicago typewriter, but that's what I'm calling it. I don't know why they decided to change the name. Now, hardcore was really tough for me. As I say, it was probably the toughest playthrough of the game, to be honest. The amount of deaths I had was quite unreal. Just, I mean, look at the cabin. The cab. Oh my God, the cabin. Oh, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's not a wrap. It is a wrap. No, 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 go away. Oh my God. Yes, let's go. <laughs> and then the goddamn water room. You know what? Might be a checkpoint. Nope. Oh, we're dead. Fuck. Oh, come on. <laughs> bro, that was... Nah, bro. That was done. All right, game. I am begging for a checkpoint right now. Thankfully, at the start of chapter eight, we pick up the infinite Chicago typewriter. Oh, my God. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Also, Ashley's section is just a breeze now, just because, I mean, look, <laughs> look at it. Was that noise? I don't care. You know what? I'll bite. <laughs> Bitches. And this is why the Chicago typewriter just makes this playthrough so much easier. We waste absolutely no time on Salazar, just because rocket launcher just 
It's just the best. Now, while it comes to the regenerators on this playthrough, just unload into them. Like, no mercy. We kill Sadler once again, and we beat the game once more to unlock the chicken hat. Now, let's begin our next playthrough, shall we? Professional new game. No infinite Chicago typewriter is allowed. Now, I knew this playthrough was going to be rough when it took me about 30 minutes just to get out of the village. Now, I do do some of the shooting ranges, just to hopefully get some extra percentage of ammo when crafted, just because if I can craft eight shotgun shells instead of six when crafting that could make such a big difference now onto the part that i thought would be most troubling in the game the cabin oh let's go second try also as well for this playthrough i decided to rock the punisher since i don't think i've ever finished a playthrough in this game with the Punisher being my main pistol. Like, it's... I didn't... I don't know why now. It's such an underrated pistol. Especially when Ashley has her knight armor. Ooh, boy, it's a beast. Now, onto the Mendez fight. I just used some speedrun strats. It really wasn't that bad. And even the water room didn't do me dirty. Overall, this playthrough really wasn't that bad. I thought it would be awful. Like, if you die, you go back to your previous save. But you can save as much times as you want. Unless you want an S plus rank. Which you don't need for the Platinum. Now, I did have some trouble with the double Garador room. Where... I had to play like I was playing in the Olympic finals going for gold and just clutch up. Oh my god, first attempt. And even the vertigo section was a little bit scary at times. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> but the hardest part of this run for me, surprisingly, was Krauser. Off. All right, five in the morning. I'm going to bed. A little later. But thankfully after that, we didn't have any issues and we beat the game on New Game Professional. Next playthrough is going to be beat the game without healing. This is on New Game Plus on Assisted. And I'm just going to have fun with the hand cannon. I have an infinite hand cannon and... God, it's so much fun to use. And here is me, of course, beating the game without healing. Now, I'm not going to show any of my standard S plus run just because it's the exact same as my hardcore run. Just you have to beat the game in under five hours. And here's me knocking out that playthrough. And of course, platinum trophy. Mission accomplished S plus. There we go. Flashy new plat platinum. What am I supposed to do with my life? 